Welcome, I'm Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number four, ontologies as key to knowledge representation. In this section of the lecture we are going from simple to complex by scaling up with OWL. Still we are on the modeling layer of the semantic web technology stack with OWL and we go right into the middle of it and we start with complex classes and first we talk about nominals. So what we want to say here is that the foundation trilogy, so the famous book series of Isaac Asimov consists of three novels. You see here on the side, let me turn on the laser pointer, you see here the book covers of the first editions of these novels. So let's see how we define a closed class, a nominal, as we have already learned in description logics. So we define here novel as a class, foundation is a novel, foundation and empire is a novel, and second foundation is a novel. Now we define the foundation trilogy to be a class and we say then, okay, this class, foundation trilogy, and connect it with OWL one of and this is exactly the constructor to construct nominals and then after that follows a collection, you remember collections from RDFS, which means I simply enumerate things and closed in parentheses. This is then a collection, a closed list, it's also a closed class. We remember collections cannot be further extended, so therefore we are using this concept from RDFS, a collection here also in the definition of OWL2. And then we say here in parentheses foundation, foundation and empire and second foundation. And ta-da, we have it. The foundation trilogy consists of three novels, which are foundation, foundation and empire and second foundation. Okay, let's look at more class constructors. Of course, we have a logical and, the conjunction. This comes to our intersection of. We have the logical or, the disjunction, that's our union of and we have logical negation. That's OWL complement of. Let's have a look at some examples. So as we know these constructors are used to construct more complex classes from simple atomic classes. First intersection. What do we want to say here? Scientific authors are authors who also are scientists. So I define scientist to be a class, I define author to be a class, and then I define scientific author, which is of course a class, and then I say, okay, this class there I add the OWL intersection of, and then of course to enumerate all of the classes where the intersection is created from, I have again here a collection, this means I use parentheses, and I list simply all of the classes of which I want to uh, compute the intersection. And this is here scientists and authors. And I'm done. Scientific authors are authors who are also scientists. So that was simple. Now let's have a look at union. Union, of course, there I put things together and create a new class out of it. Like, for example, I want to say climate activists, animal rights activists and energy savers, they all are environmentalists. So let's define environmentalists as a class and I say this class is equivalent to a class. So this is a second way to phrase exactly this class expression. So to be to build it via equivalent class, you see here the equivalent in description logic. So if I want to do environmentalist, define that and say this is the disjunction or the union of climate activist, animal rights savers or animal rights activist and energy saver. And this means I define here again environmentalist as an old class and I say this is equivalent to and now if I define an equivalent class and I have a complex expression there, I put this in these square brackets, which means if you create the graph of it, you have there a blank node and then behind the blank node you have simply then here the union of, so the blank node is connected via OWL union to a collection of things which are climate activist, animal rights activist and energy saver. So this is another way to frame that. You could also do it already like we have seen on the previous page. And there is a third way to do this. This is then not with an equivalent class, but with a subclass. So you will see this in the later examples. Next thing we want to define is here, for example, um, negation. Utopia is the complement of dystopia. 
The easiest way to do that is simply we define a class dystopia and then we define a class utopia and we say utopia owl complement of and then of course again that's a collection that we have here only with one element and this would contain dystopia here and this would mean utopia is the complement of dystopia. So that was also not so difficult. Further restrictions are more interesting for us now if it comes here to strict and loose binding that we have already defined or to number-based restrictions, numeric restrictions on the cardinality. So for strict and loose binding we have all, all values from and all sum values from and a specific case when we fix it to a specific value all has value. And for the number restrictions, we have owl cardinality, min cardinality and max cardinality. So let's see how this works. Let's first try to do property restrictions with a constant. So the first case with has value. We want to do Asimov's writing and define them as Asimov writings are authored by a specific individual, by Isaac, Isaac Asimov. Okay. Asimov's writing is an OWL class and we define it here as being a subclass of the things that have been authored by a specific author, Isaac Asimov. Of course, these writings might be co-authored by other authors, so therefore we are using here, for example, um, exactly that kind of existential quantification. And this translates here into Isaac Asimov's writing. It's an OWL class and this is a subclass of something which is enclosed in square brackets. So we create a blank node and connect then this blank node to all of these things. We define that this is an OWL restriction. So of course it's a kind of restriction on the role that we have here, on the property. We have to define on which property we are restricting here. So OWL on property then would be author. All of these things here are of course new triples and we don't know uh, need the new subject because the subject is a blank node which is denoted here by the square brackets and therefore I enclose every triple here. All of them have the same subject with a semicolon. So then owl on property author and of course I have to restrict then the value exactly. I say owl has value Isaac Asimov. And this is a restriction with a constant which denotes nothing else but Asimov's writing are authored by Isaac Asimov. Okay, let's go to strict binding then. After constant we go to strict binding and here what we want to say is vegetarian dishes contain only vegetarian ingredients and nothing else. Okay, so let's see how this is defined. We say here vegetarian dishes is an old class and we define it exactly in the same way like you see it here in description logics. We say vegetarian dish is a subclass of something of which all of its ingredients are vegetarian food. So, and nothing else of course. We define it here again, subclass of square brackets and this is again an owl restriction on a specific property and the property is ingredient and of course all values of ingredient must be from the class vegetarian food. And then, of course, this restriction holds. So it's as simple as that. It's OWL values from that fixes all instances of a specific class C as a loud range for a property P and this is a so-called strict binding as we already know. Look at another example what you can then logically deduct from that. So if we have here Again, this example that we have here, um, vegetarian dish defined with exactly this strict binding. And if we have in the example here kimchi and say this is a vegetarian dish, so it strictly obeys to that class definition. And we have an ingredient there and the ingredient is cabbage. And we know that this is a vegetarian dish. According to our definition, we can deduce that cabbage has to be of type vegetarian food. So this is type of an inference we can draw from a strict class binding. Let's go to loose binding. Um, the example we are going to do here is a reader is somebody who reads, amongst other things, books. So I can define this in description logics again as a reader, which is a subclass of something where exactly the role or the property reads 
should be at least once a book, but can also be other things. So a reader can also read newspapers, but at least he should have read a book, otherwise he or she is not a reader. This is what is expressed here. If we transfer this to OWL, we have reader is an OWL class and that's a subclass of something where I put an OWL restriction on the property reads and I then use the uh, keyword OWL sum values from, so this is the loose binding and then I write here book on the class book, which means a reader is somebody who reads amongst other things also books. Let's again look at an example. So if I take here myself, for example, and I say, okay, I'm a reader. And for example, then of course it's allowed or it's mandatory that I read at least one book. So that might be Brave New World, which is a book, but I can also read other things like the New York Times. And this is of course of type newspaper and not a book, but I'm still a reader. So that's allowed, that's no contradiction. This is what I can do with loose binding. Besides these three restrictions on values, there can also be restrictions on the cardinality of my results. Which means, for example, if I want to define what is a trilogy, a trilogy always consists of three volumes of books. It's clear. And if I want to define that, I can do this in the following way. I define here a trilogy to be an OWL class. And I say this is a subclass of something where I have again a restriction and the restriction is on the property volume and here I do a cardinality restriction. I say the OWL cardinality should be 3 and 3 is an integer again, which means here, okay, Trilogy is always restricted to 3 volumes and nothing else. So this is what we are looking at. Okay, and then uh, there are also uh, the keywords max cardinality and min cardinality and Besides being here or restricted to an exact number, you can also give an upper and a lower bound for cardinality values here. So you can say it should be larger 3 or it should be less than 3. So this is what you can define here. And that's the additional things that you can put restrictions on cardinality in OWL. Okay. So far so good. So then let's go on and let's unlock the potential of OWL in the next lecture.